my task today is to give you uh, an overview um, on what's happening in advocacy, what should our asks be, how should we communicate effectively with Congress. Um, I will cover UN funding and the MDGs, uh, and Don will do the um, uh, human rights uh, and international treaties, all of which are part of our UNA USA advocacy priorities. Um, and um, let me first address a broad issue that um, you all get uh, some extent when you read the paper, or you watch the news, um, which is that if I were to give this speech a year ago, it would have been different because the fiscal situation in the United States, the budget situation, has changed profoundly in a way that nobody anticipated. Um, and, uh, you know, even a year ago, the types of budget cuts that were being contemplated were once primarily being advocated by uh, a group of Republicans in the House of Representatives. Um, as a result of the budget agreement uh, that was agreed to uh, that governs this fiscal year, FY11, uh, it's fair to say that this is uh, budget cuts that have been agreed to by the White House, by Democrats in both the House and Senate. So we're now dealing with a more bipartisan, more shrinked fiscal situation than even a year ago, and we need to be aware of that. You need to be aware of that as you head towards the Hill, that it is a different situation uh, than before. Um, and, uh, you know, it's important to think, again, as we think about UN funding, uh, that you have to understand the broader situation, which is at the moment, and this may change, we're talking about um, cuts in discretionary spending, uh, which is only 35% of the federal budget. At the moment, Medicare is off the table politically for the White House. Um, Social Security off the table, defense, of course, off the table. So now we have a situation where all the cuts have to come from 35% of the budget. And if you looked at FY11, 18% of the discretionary cuts came from foreign affairs. So it's already uh, ha foreign affairs spending more generally, which covers UN spending, the MDGs, and a whole bunch of other stuff, has already been singled out for disproportionate cuts. Um, and unfortunately, as we think about FY12, and that's the fiscal year that we're talking about right now, it's only gonna get worse um, and uh, in terms of the, the budgetary pressures being felt. Um, so let's talk about the UN. So we now see the, big, the, the broader fiscal situation, which is not good and getting worse. It, in that context, it's really unbelievable that we still have fully paid our dues to the UN on time and in full. Um, in FY11, um, and it was because the president requested the right amount, which was a new thing. In the Bush administration, there was repeated under requests in funding. So the president would say, oh, I got full funding for the UN, but it wasn't the right amount. So we now have a president that's asking for the right amount of money under Secretary Clinton and Ambassador Rice, they use extensive personal resources to go to the Hill to try to get the money, and they did it successfully in FY10 and FY11. And most importantly, we have a broad coalition with UNA USA, working together with CGS, working together with Better World Campaign, uh, and then a broad other group of NGOs that we collectively have brought together in DC. Members of Congress and their staff are hearing about it. They get emails, they get letters, they have meetings about UN funding and its importance um, to American interests and to international interests. So all that together um, has resulted in the fact that not only have we paid back dues to the UN, but we're fully paid up at the moment. Um, but as we think about FY12, we certainly have our work cut out for us. Um, but let me tell you what I think we've done already and then what we need to do to get the right result. Let me point out the best thing, which is the first ever joint Better World Campaign UNA-USA briefing book, which is over 75 pages, uh, or, sorry, 62 pages, of concrete information about every aspect of the US-UN relationship. This briefing book went to Capitol Hill. Every congressional office has one. And it's a guidebook for the Hill to know why the UN matters, 
Why do we pay money to the UN? How does it serve American interests? How does it serve global interests? We try to answer all these questions. But most importantly, this briefing book says that with the, our two logos on top, that these organizations are the ones to go to if they have any questions about the US-UN relationship. Um, second of all, we stressed positive messaging. We are capable of playing offense and defense at the same time. And so as a result, um, we uh, um, held a, a reception on, on Capitol Hill to thank a peacekeeper. Well, it was important that we thank peacekeepers, and it's a, a campaign that the Better World campaign is running at the moment. But most importantly, it was our way of telling the Hill that the UN in a, does positive things around the world. We didn't have any specific ask for the Hill. It was just positive messaging about the UN that we were sending to the Hill at an, at an important time in the budgetary process. Coming up, we have a joint UNA-USA Better World Campaign reception on the Hill uh, that advertises the important ways in which the UN serves American business interests. Because frankly, when you talk to congressional offices these days, it's about business and it's about jobs. I mean, people are, are very concerned, as they should be, about the unemployment rate here at home. Well, the UN is a major employer of Americans. The UN specialized agencies, through a variety of different ways, make it easier for Americans to do business abroad. Businesses in everybody's congressional districts benefit because of postal regulations that are set by UN bodies, telecommunications regulations that are set by UN bodies, but nobody ever advertises that to the Hill. That's our job. So our organizations working together will be advertising to the Hill that the UN benefits American business and uh, therefore benefits jobs here at home. And um, it's an important positive message that we're going to get out. Um, and uh, I think the other amazing, wonderful thing is tomorrow. Um, this is exactly what needs to happen, is these individual meetings with members of Congress and staff, and as a former staff member, let me tell you, staff rule the world. Uh, and you know, um, and uh, Mike Beard would agree too, as with Jordy. Um, and uh, I, I think that uh, these meetings are an important way because frankly, they do, this information does get through to the member of Congress because they ask their staff, well, what kind of meetings are happening? Well, I had a, some people in from a district that cared about UN funding. Well, that's interesting. And if, if you, I guarantee you, if nobody asks for the money from your district, then it has a zero priority list because there's a lot of other people in your district that are asking for the money, that are asking for engagement with the UN or engagement with their cause. And so if we don't ask for engagement with the UN, then that member of Congress has zero interest in supporting it. So that's our job, is to make sure that our members of Congress have heard from people about the importance of the UN, because if we don't do it, nobody will. Um, and uh, I think but it's not only this positive action, but it's action in terms of um, uh, what, you know, specific issues. UNA had an active lobby week um, when members of Congress were home for their first spring break, or their first break, and we had 35 chapters and divisions around the country asking for meetings, doing meetings in their home uh, districts. That's what members of Congress and their staff need to see. They need to hear the people from your towns actually care, and cared enough to ask for a meeting, cared enough to ask for a letter. So I, this type of uh, engagement already works. Um, and then finally, I would just say letters and emails. These do are, they are counted. Um, it, it's something that's easy for your chapters and members of your chapters and divisions to do. They really can make a difference. Um, and, uh, and Kathy alluded earlier to the polling information, um, and this is an important element of what we advertise to the Hill, because we just released a poll that showed that, you know, that uh, more than 60% uh, of Americans want us to pay our, our dues to the UN on time and in full. And almost 80% of Americans want us to remain engaged with the UN. You know, it's a, it's a disconnect sometimes, because you go to some congressional offices, and you'll hear this tomorrow. And people will say, staff and members will say, oh, just don't mention the UN. Everybody hates the UN. And this polling just goes, that's not correct. That people actually don't hate the UN. People understand the importance of the UN to serving American interests. And Ambassador Rice was right on message this morning, which he's described the myriad of ways in which the UN serves global interests and serves America at the same time. 
Um, let me just quickly touch on the MDGs and turn it over to Don, uh, which is that they are similarly affected by the budget situation. Uh, the President has a global health initiative, has a, um, uh, a Feed the Future initiative, both of which are, are, are ambitious agenda items that serve um, uh, the Millennium Development Goals. Um, but, um, the, you know, it's a challenging fiscal time. Just a, a couple of ways just for information about the way the Hill thinks about the Millennium Development Goals. Um, they tend to put it in the context of what specific interventions they know of, they care of. Malaria, international family planning, HIV AIDS, all of which are related to the MDGs. It's just when you talk about the MDGs to the Hill, it's important to also put in that context of that's what we're really talking about here is these particular interventions. Um, and also the Hill tends to focus on the mechanisms of uh, how the MDGs are fulfilled, um, whether it's the Global Fund, uh, PEPFAR, Pre Presidential Malaria Initiative, or um, uh, an initiative that the United Nations Foundation were involved in, which is the, the vaccine, uh, Global Vaccine Alliance, which today had a very important uh, international meeting uh, to support childhood immunization. Um, and uh, so I think uh, just the other point that when you talk about the MDGs is when you connect with members of Congress and staff, they need to know that they're part of a winning cause. They need to know that there's things that are happening that are positive in the world, and America's part of it. Because frankly, there's so much bad news out there. And people just, you know, they read the papers and they go, oh, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. People need to hear a positive message that American support to fight AIDS, American efforts to battle malaria have actually produced tangible results and saved lives. But we're not done yet. If we want to end malaria, if we want to make sure that every child is immunized, we need to continue to support these important initiatives. So they need to hear great progress so far, not done yet, this money is well spent, and America has an important leadership role to play. And when you put that whole package together, it's frankly a more appealing picture than um, uh, sort of a, the, the only the negative side of the house. Uh, so um, in any event, that's UN funding, that's the MDGs. Uh, let me turn it over to Don for the rest. Thanks.